Four, three, my check, one, two, three. My check, one. Good afternoon, gentlemen. It's great to be before you again this Saturday afternoon. This beautiful Saturday afternoon. As we always do about this time, let's give it up for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Come on, y'all. Give him a round of applause. Give him praise. Give him glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Gentlemen, today's meal, which is a very good meal, as always, is sponsored by none other than Shape. Let's give Shape a round of applause, gentlemen. Praise God. I, I kind of want to just talk with you, if I may, this Saturday afternoon. If you recall a couple of Saturdays ago, I spoke about death. And according to the Word of God, it says that every wise man thinks of death. And I kind of explained that, but what caught my attention when I was preaching to that and speaking to the Word of God is somebody in line said, if I thought you guys were all bad because you're homeless, and that kind of hit me because see we're not out here to judge anybody in fact brothers we are no better than you guys are we are all sinners which is why we all are in need of a savior okay but as a pastor, preacher, and teacher, it's my job and my dad's job and everybody else who is called according to the purpose and will of God, if you are a believer, to preach the gospel. You don't have to be a pastor, a preacher, or teacher. We are called to spread the word. Reason why is because for those who are lost, that you may be found, and when you stand before a holy God, that you will be found blameless in his sight. You see, the fact of the matter is, gentlemen, every one of us is going to die. Whether you think about it or not, we're all going to die. That is the goal, and that's what's going to happen. But see, as a pastor, preacher, and teacher, our goal is, of everyone who is the bride of Christ and who is a part of the body, who is a part of the church, is to spread that news and provide warning. Jesus spoke about how more than he did about heaven. Why? Why, gentlemen? Because it's a warning. He spoke this that the last may be found in the light that shines within the pastors, preachers, and teachers, and Christians which shine through each of us that way you may see it because who takes a light and hides it under a basket no one what good would that do you if you're in the house of darkness and i walk in there and i put a light on and i hide it underneath the basket no good so i need you to understand if you would please brothers the responsibilities as believers in christ I understand my priority, which is why I'm out here every Saturday preaching about the grace of God. To do His will and His purpose, to come here and proclaim the good news, to call out sin and present the only true living God who loves you so much that He sent His Son to die for you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. If you believe, then you have the same responsibility because if you don't, love the bride then how can you say you love the groom let me say this again if you don't love the bride of christ which is the church which is all believers how could you say you love the groom now the question is who's the groom anybody know who the groom is jesus. amen jesus praise god hallelujah did not paul say that he wanted to go to rome but he had other things to do first why? Because he understood that although he wanted to go to Rome, he had a responsibility to God to spread the gospel, just as I, I do and you do. If you don't have a desire to speak truth, gentlemen, the gospel that someone might be saved and lost, that they might be found, then do you love the world? This is why I preach on sin. This is why I speak on death. 
And this is why I preach about the love of Christ. And how could you be saved? Not that what I speak would be a stumbling block to any of you, but rather that the seed, which is the word of God Almighty, would take root in your hearts and that you might give birth to it and walk hand in hand with the Holy Spirit. And that I might have the privilege one day, God willing, of seeing you in heaven. Bottom line, gentlemen, one word. Why are we out here? Saturday after Saturday. Why did God send his only son? It's love. Now, I could sit here and I'll look each and every one of you in your eyes and say, I love you. It takes a real man to do that. So the question would be is, how many real men do we have in this line? Can you look another man in his eyes and say you love him enough to tell him the truth? That's why we're here, gentlemen. We know that God's word doesn't return void. It will accomplish its purpose. And we also know that the rain and the sun shines on the saved as well as the wicked. We know that death comes for both the saved and the wicked. Christians die, gentlemen. But by being faithful to God and coming here week after week, giving the word and praying that you will, you will be saved, that you will proclaim and testify how he saved you, then his church will what? Never die. You don't know when Jesus is coming, nor do I, gentlemen. We don't know when your soul will be required of you. But what you do know is at this very moment, you can be ready. Ready to stand before Christ, ready for death to come, and ready to be in right standing with Father. If you don't have Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are not ready, gentlemen. But at this very moment, you can be. That's the good news of the gospel. Listen to the still voice of the Holy Spirit speaking to your hearts. Listen. And should you refuse this calling, you cannot stand before a holy God and say, you didn't know. So I pray this, that when you lay your head down tonight, gentlemen, that you hear your heartbeat. That you hear your heartbeat. And as you hear it, remember that sound is not something that's promised to you. And I pray that the mercy of the loving God on you, that he allows you to continue to draw breath, that you might humble yourself and say, I want to be ready, Lord. I repent of my sins in dust and ashes, for I am a sinner in need of you, Jesus, my Savior. Let him who has ears hear what the Spirit says to the churches, gentlemen. This is God calling over and over and over again. Will you heed to his calling, gentlemen? So I ask before I close in prayer, is there anybody who would like to hearken unto the voice of the Lord and say, I'm ready? I'm ready to make you my Lord and Savior. I'm ready to surrender all to you. I'm ready to be obedient to your commandments. If so, please raise your hand. Anyone? Praise God. We got one, two, three, four, five. We got five people down here. So as you guys come through, please let my dad know. Let me know. We want to pray with each and every one of you, okay? Please don't forget. Please don't forget. This is very important. Now, if you'll honor the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and bow your heads with me as I pray. Father God, Lord Jesus, creator of heaven and earth, it's always an honor and a privilege to be before your throne in your presence with my brethren. We come here faithfully, Father God, to do your will. I ask, Lord, please, that you incline your ear to this prayer that the Holy Spirit would move through the hearts of these men. Father, that they would realize that we're not promised the next heartbeat and that death should be on their mind because a wise man has death on his mind 
to get right with you. So I ask, Father, please prick their hearts. Let them hear their heartbeats so they would remember what I said, Lord Jesus. They're not promised to hear that next heartbeat. Also, Father, I ask that you bless them. Bless them, Father God. Call them according to your purpose and will. In the mighty name of Christ Jesus, we all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, brothers.